Welcome to St. Paul. It's live. So whenever we finish, see? Just press that. Oh, okay. And then hit that button again. Just or, push or finish. At the end of the service. Yep. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Welcome to First Street Summer Worship here with St. Paul. I'm so glad all you could make it. Looks like we have a lot of people out here tonight. Um, last night, the last week, we got rained out, uh, but now we have this lovely breeze and this nice weather. So uh, tonight, we have Craig Bilkey providing the message. Yay. And we're joined by the wonderful Jillian and Chris Ritter for music. We're going to go ahead and get uh, started here. Uh, the weather looks fine. If there were lightning or thunder or rain, we would let you know. Um, but right now, it looks like we're good. Yep. So uh, take it away. Thank you. 
What's up, everyone? My name is Craig Bokey. I'm the director of Faith Formation and Care here at St. Paul. It's so great to be able to worship with you. Uh, if we haven't had a chance to connect, I'd love to go ahead and have that opportunity. Uh, you can always find me on Facebook or just, of course, talk to us right here after church, or rather after First Street worship today. Uh, Pastor Michelle goes ahead and sends her uh, blessings to everybody here. She's worshiping with us virtually uh, on our Facebook Live. Speaking of Facebook, if you haven't liked us already on there, do go ahead and do that. It's a great way to go ahead and connect with us at the church. It's also a great way for us to go ahead and connect with you, keep up with things that are going on in your life. Uh, regular Sunday worship, of course, goes ahead and happens there, and then also YouTube, uh, along with us on the radio. So, first things first, of course, we need to go ahead and uh, invite the Spirit of God to come here with us as we are all joined together as this one body united in Christ, as this one community, one country, and one world. So let us go ahead and join our hearts and our minds in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious Holy God, as we come and we are sitting outside and we feel the wind brushing against our skin, we can also feel the breath of you, O oh God, which is inside of that wind. As that wind brushes in between each of us, it unites us and it brings us closer together. God, allow for your spirit to move freely amongst us. Open our ears, soften our hearts, and allow for our minds to hear what it is that you are saying to us today and every day. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Uh, the scripture today is going to be coming from the gospel according to Matthew. And I'm going to do an expanded version. So I'm reading Matthew 15, verses 10 through 28. Then he, Jesus, called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached him and said to him, Do you know? that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said. He answered, Every plant that my Heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into the pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then he said, Are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart comes evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre in Sidron. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy upon me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. And he answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and to throw it out to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And your daughter, and her daughter was healed immediately. May God richly bless our hearing and our understanding of God's holy word. Amen. So the past evening, I think we had a little bit of some rain come on through here. I know we did across the river in the STL area. We don't have to worry about the stuff down there in the south. It's pretty far down there. So we'll just leave that darkening cloud to do what it's going to do. But what I'm talking about is the storm that came through last night. That storm was full of lightning, it was full of thunder. It went ahead and woke up my son, Brian, quite a few times. 
And uh, thanks to the German Shepherd dog, we were kept, uh, or he kept the thunder and the lightning at bay. The water, on the other hand, can't really be kept at bay too well. The water can find uh, the path of least resistance like nobody's business. And it seems to just find ways into places that you don't ever want it to be in, right? That rain was immense, uh, caused a little bit of flooding around, but also it caused us to have some refreshing new weather patterns, I feel. It allowed for us to, you know, wash away, even though we had some beautiful weather beforehand, washed off all the sidewalks around my neighborhood. It kind of cleared out the streams. Uh, Richland Creek is my new favorite spot to go hang out in cent uh, Centennial. Centennial Park, thank you. Uh, and just do some brief writing and some reading down there. Uh, whenever I stop by there this afternoon to kind of check up on the level, it was quite high. But rainstorms have a way of refreshing things about causing you to change your perspective on what the weather is going to be doing. And now, that's the, exactly what today's parable is all about. Changing your perspective. Has anybody seen the movie Ratatouille? It's kind of an older movie, uh, I hate to say that. It's not super old, but it's like mid 2000s teens, so it's relatively old. It's a CGI movie, it's about a rat that goes ahead and controls a chef by sitting up underneath his hat. And uh, he can apparently cook. The chef can't cook, but the rat can cook quite well. Uh, and there's a food critic named Ego. Ego is a critic that uh, doles out Michelin stars to places, and whenever he comes along to review Ratatouille's restaurant, he goes ahead and lets them know that he will be dishing out the perspective. He will be the one who lets them know if their food is good enough, if it passes the muster for what's gonna be said or what's gonna go ahead and be served out to everybody else. And Jesus had some perspective doled out on him. Set that scene again. As Jesus is walking down the street, he had just got done preaching to 5,000, or feeding 5,000 people. He just got done walking on water and saving Peter. And now he's sitting around with his friends. He just went ahead and kind of threw down the gauntlet to the Pharisees and telling them that everything that they've been saying has been defiling to God. That is what went ahead and rubbed the Pharisees the wrong way because the Pharisees loved to stand on the street corners and make sure that all the things that they said, all their prayers and all their worship, that that is what would go ahead and help get them into the kingdom of heaven, they thought. And Jesus dishes that out. And then there's a woman that's standing also on the street corner and she's yelling to the top of her lungs for Jesus to just pay a little bit of attention to her. And he doesn't. He just dismisses her, doesn't even acknowledge her existence, which is completely antithesis, the complete opposite of what Jesus normally would do. Jesus would normally, in all of our scriptures, take into consideration everybody's needs, and he would listen. He even listened to the children whenever he said, uh, do not uh, hinder the children to come to me and forbid them not. But so Jesus didn't pay any mind to this woman now. And then the disciples are kind of nagging at him saying, Jesus, she's not going away. You better do something about this. And he makes a little bit of a gauntlet to her. And he says, there's no way that I can go ahead and tend to her because she is already a lost person, even though she's not a lost person, because she was one of the chosen people in a way but Jesus was coming for the sinners, the tax collectors, for the people that might not have already heard the message. This is a woman who had great faith in Jesus. So finally, he goes ahead and pays her attention, and then he tells her that, you know, I can't go ahead and give to you something whenever the children that I'm here to feed don't have everything that they need already. And then she talks about God. Who doesn't love a good dog, right? <laughs> Everybody loves a good, faithful dog. 
even the ones that do wake us up in the middle of the night with the thunder booming outside. And so whenever she finally gets his attention, whenever she finally is able to give Jesus a little bit of perspective, and she tells him that even the dogs get the crumbs that their masters leave off the table. And now anybody that might have a child that uh, also has a dog knows that children love to feed dogs, don't they? Our son, Brian, has now figured out uh, the release mechanism on his hand, and he will take whatever it is that's on his plate, gently lays it over the side, and just lets the bomb drop for the dogs and immediately vacuum it up. Uh, whether that be his favorite piece of macaroni, whatever it is, he loves to feed the dog. So Jesus has said that not even the dog should get the crumbs off of, or rather the woman says that the crumbs off the table are even what the dogs get. And Jesus does something again that we never see. He changes his mind. He got a little bit of perspective from an unexpected source. Was the storm that came up last night an expected occurrence for anybody? I'm not seeing too many shaking of heads. As John and I were talking today, uh, to be in weather forecasting is the best job, I think, because it's the only job that you could be 70% wrong and you can still be considered to be doing a really good job. 30% right and you're, you're batting a thousand in that job. The storm that came up last night was unexpected for me in that I didn't see it coming on the radar. I didn't see it coming in the forecast. Yes, of course, it said that there was a flash flood watch, but they also said a lot of other things about the weather systems and patterns that were going to be coming. And well, you can only cry wolf so many times before we stop listening. The unexpectedness that Jesus went ahead and got from this woman teaching him and he finally changed his mind and he was able to then heal the woman's daughter and meet her needs. Now the needs that we might go ahead and be needing aren't maybe as serious or maybe they're even more serious perhaps in your own situation and scenario in life than what this woman is experiencing. But regardless, the unexpected places are the places that we often neglect to go ahead and listen or to see where God is acting in, acting out in, where God is speaking from. I mean, whenever you're walking down the street and you might not really think about it, but just a smile or the smile eyes, because we all wear face masks now, that can go ahead and brighten up somebody's day. Or whenever you're at the grocery store and you see the uh, probably extremely tired parent that is walking with their uh, family or their child with them and letting them maybe go first in line. Might go ahead and just be the unexpected place for you to show grace to them in that very, very simple, small act. But the unexpected places where we can go ahead and show the same thing that the woman actually showed to Jesus in showing that God's love can come from a place that nobody expects it to come from. And Jesus didn't know that he was going to be having that kind of an experience that day, that he was going to be given a little lesson, a little teaching of his own kind. After he had just thrown down that gauntlet to the Pharisees, after he had just went ahead and produced a miracle in feeding 5,000, it says men in there, along with women and children extra, where Jesus had just calmed the waters, or rather had just walked on water and saved Peter as well. Now we go ahead and have Jesus that's getting a little bit of his own medicine. It shows that Jesus is actually a human being too. And there's grace not only that he goes ahead and gives to the woman, but there's also got to be some grace that he gives to himself. Because we can't all be right, right? We can't be right all the time, maybe it's a better thing to go ahead and say. I thought that I was wrong once, but I was mistaken. <laughs> it works. But there's a time that we go ahead and have to take our own lessons, and we have to use them to go ahead and be able to show that grace to somebody else. What are those going to be for us as we leave here tonight? We go ahead and go out and we 
show what it's like to be the Canaanite woman, and that might be us, or what it's like to go to be Jesus, and that our mind goes ahead and gets changed. I don't know what that's going to be for you, or what it's going to be for me in the future. If Jesus didn't see it coming, how can we either? But we have to be able to be open and see those unexpected places, and the unexpectedness go ahead and be able to be for us. Let it go ahead and be so. Amen. ahead and close our worship with prayer. Holy God, who sh shows yourself in unexpected places, as we go ahead and turn ourselves out from this place, allow for us to also be an unexpected place for your grace to shine forward in the world. God, protect all of us as we go out into the world to be the light that goes out into the darkness to show the light and the love of Jesus to everyone. And let us join our hearts and our minds in the prayer that Jesus taught us all to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. 
friends, our worship is now concluded, but our service is just beginning. As we go into the world, do so in love, do so in Christian love, support the weak, uplift the faint-hearted, render unto no one evil for evil, rejoice with those who rejoice, and weep with those who weep. Love and serve God in all things. And now shalom to you. The peace of God be with you. The peace which this world cannot give, the peace which this world cannot take away. And finally, let us give a large round of applause to our special musicians. Amazing about the gifts that God has blessed you with. Surely we'll go ahead and help bring glory to God's kingdom throughout all the world because of y'all's amazing musical abilities and vocal abilities as well. So thank y'all so much for sharing those with us today. Yeah, thank you. Go out into the world and be the light of